that you are here today to learn more about how Hypothesis works in Blackboard. Um, here's our agenda for the day. We're gonna kind of discuss the why behind social annotation along with, um, you know, what Hypothesis is all about. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a demonstration of how to enable a uh, piece of text in Blackboard. And we'll round out the session today, hopefully feeling most of your questions in the chat. Um, please feel free to um, ask those questions as we go. That's why my colleagues are here to help out. Um, but again, we're a pretty small group. So <laughs> I have a feeling um, we won't have a very busy discussion thread in the chat. So um, introductions. Uh, Carlene and Rigoberto, I think. Um, if you would like to, if you could please, uh, in the chat function, if you can drop down to everyone and sort of share a little bit about yourself. Uh, I obviously know your names, but maybe um, attach it with a school, your department or discipline, and then what your experience level is with Hypothesis. All right. So, Christy, you tell me, I mean, I'm going to let you talk as much as possible in this session because I want you to get to know our uh, our folks here today. Um, but you let me know at any moment if you would like to pivot and share a little bit. Okay, perfect. Yeah, of course. Um, let's talk a little bit about the why and a little bit about the how. Um, what does it look like to annotate with hypothesis? Well, um, oh, my God, that was gone. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, first off, let's set some set some purpose here. Uh, hypothesis. What it does is it makes reading active, visible, and social. Um, I love these quotes. Um, the uh, first one, sort of getting students to engage at a deeper level, um, critically think through pieces of text in your course, um, seeing the pleasures and profits, which I love about that quote, uh, of careful uh, reading and social annotation. And then, of course, uh, taking a process that unfortunately is mostly invisible um, and making it much more transparent and visible. I used to always say as a, as a teacher, it was hard to know what was going on in my students' minds uh, when they were reading in my class. I, I didn't, and sometimes wouldn't want to, but <laughs> no, it was in their minds, but I did want insight into their thoughts. I wanted a window to their in understandings and misunderstandings so, um, so I could intervene. Um, and then finally, it obviously makes reading much more social. Uh, especially when you're dealing with an alternate format than face-to-face, -face, if it's a hybrid, high-flex uh, situation, um, or, you know, really empowering students that may be a little more shy to engage verbally or in a in a face-to-face -face, uh, format. It, it brings community, it builds connections. Um, so for sure, uh, Hypothesis uh, accomplishes a lot uh, when it comes to your courses. Now, I'm going to pivot for a second because um, I'm going to kind of show you uh, what hypothesis looks like in uh, a setting. So I'm going to open up um, an article here and actually show you what hypothesis looks like. Let's take a second to open up, but this is the sidebar that uh, opens on the side of any reading that's enabled with Hypothesis. Um, we'll get into more details later about the grading panel and some other things. And then of course, I am gonna show you how to enable um, a Hypothesis reading, but I wanna show you um, what it looks like first. So the idea is I've already actually anchored some annotations on the side. Um, I used a few different formats, uh, multimedia to sort of liven up the margin. Um, and I definitely encourage you to try the same with your students. Um, but the basic function functionality behind it is that once you are in a hypothesis enabled reading, you highlight a piece of selectable text, you click to annotate, and then uh, you write your annotation. Um, in this case, I used to teach high school. 
I know that's a very deep thought, but <laughs> uh, it shows you the functionality pretty well. Um, once I've shared my annotation on the side, uh, I want to make sure that I click this to post it to Hypothesis, and then I am done. Um, the good news is that I can always go back and I can edit my annotations. I can delete my annotation um, if I don't, you know, don't think it really promotes the discourse. Or anybody in the course can actually reply to me with this little bent arrow on the side. Um, and so that's where the social annotation aspect comes to be. Uh, I can add images, any publicly available images, and even video um, into my annotations. Along with, if you notice up here, I can also um, use emojis. Um, another thing that I always point out is that you can tag your thoughts in your annotations. So you can share uh, and sort of classify what type of annotation it might be, uh, if it's a question you might be asking. If it's an image you might be sharing, you could tag it as an image, but it just makes it a little easier to maybe do live searching um, for keywords and things of that sort. So we do have a tagging function in there as well. Um, as far as some other aspects that are cool to look at and, and understand, um, we have the ability to um, eliminate highlights if that is sometimes too distracting, um, both for your students and for you. Um, you can always turn them on or off, but the annotation is always anchored. Um, we have this thing called page notes, which is uh, an interesting function. It allows you the only difference between a page note and an annotation is that the page note is not tethered to a piece of text. So it's great for um, if you want students to look at a piece in its entirety and really share like a summary, um, an opinion, anything like that. So uh, another great thing that you can use Hypothesis for is to engage them in some, you know, some higher levels of thinking. Um, up here at the top, we've got, uh, as I already showed you before, the magnifying is a way to search uh, tags and search names and things of that sort. Um, we do have a question mark if you ever need to navigate to our knowledge base to find answers. Um, or, you know, we hope you won't have to, but if you need to create a support ticket because you're having a technical issue, but that is found there under the question mark. And then here we have something where you, this thing called the, the notebook, um, which if I open here allows me to see annotations across assignments and not necessarily connected uh, with, the, with the reading on the left side. This is great for grading purposes. I like to promote that. <laughs> um, not to mention uh, for students to come back and see all of their learning throughout the entirety of a course. Um, so with that said, I think I've kind of shown you most of the navigation. Of course, here is the grading toolbar that allows you to kind of navigate to each individual students. And what it will do is it'll pull up just their annotations um, when you are doing those uh, grades and um, you know, set fairly self-explanatory. So with that said, kind of shown you what it looks like. Um, here are some active links. And I know one of my colleagues has posted uh, the slide deck here. So I would definitely help uh, tell you to navigate back to slide seven if you're interested in any of these resources. Um, I particularly like uh, the ones here at the bottom that, that show you use cases across different disciplines um, that might be helpful. Okay. Uh, so hypothesis and Blackboard, um, one of the things I do like to point out here is uh, that students do not need to make an account on Hypothesis in order to engage with Hypothesis reading. So, um, you know, if you're if you're if you're curious about what one of the main perks <laughs> of Hypothesis and Blackboard is, this is definitely one of them. Um, and then I already kind of showed you what that uh, annotation um, uh, Blackboard grading um, uh, bar at the top looks like, but. Uh, this, this slide will kind of show you what that, that's all about. And we also integrate with Blackboard group sets uh, for small group work. And I won't be enabling small groups in our session today when I, when I do my demo, um, but I will be actually um, on the screen that shows you where you can select um, to create a group assignment. But this is great for um, if you've got particularly big courses, 
um, and you're looking to kind of minimize the risk for students to feel more free about sharing their thoughts and ideas in the margins, um, you know, not to mention um, if you kind of want to focus the thinking uh, or the tasks based on the different groups, that's another great use case too. All right. Um, as far as what we support, uh, we obviously support um, uh, adding URLs, web pages. That's what you saw in my last um, in my last view or demonstration. Um, but we also support publicly available PDFs from like OneDrive or Google Drive, or perhaps your Blackboard files if that is integrated at your institution. And then we also support OER as well as we're also piloting with JSTOR and VitalSource. So um, I don't know if we're all still, I think we've got a, at least one more uh, person that's joined, uh, joined us, Matthew, I believe I actually work with you, Matt. <laughs> you are mine. Um, I am your customer success manager, but um, Carlene and Rigoberto are gonna obviously wanna tag Christy um, if they have some questions around those two integrations as well. Uh, what can you put in there? I kind of showed you live what that looks like, but I do want to point out that we also have an equation builder um, for if you are a STEM course instructor, you can add equations in the margin. Um, we talked about those tags, um, but lots of great options, like I said, to kind of make the margin come alive. Um, important to know that PDFs have to be OCR'd uh, and accessible in order to enable them on Hypothesis. And what that basically means is text has to be selectable. So if you're like, I don't know if this old scanned image I have that's a PDF, I don't know if that's going to work. I would say open it up, see if you can select text if you can't. The cool news is that we have a free OCRing tool here connected on this slide 17. So um, this will give you um, a great pathway to, to take some of those old scanned PDFs and make sure that they are OCR'd and have that selectable text. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This, uh, this slide just kind of really goes through our uh, resources. It's even got a tutorial uh, about what I'm going to show you in a few seconds, um, taking you through the pathway of enabling a, a Blackboard uh, hypothesis enabled reading. Um, but there's also some knowledge base articles that you can refer back to if you forget any of our steps. And moving on. So with that said, I think I'm going to take a moment and actually show you what uh, it looks like to enable a, a text in Blackboard using Hypothesis. So uh, if you'll notice, I'm back here at my original screen. And what I wanna do is I wanna click content. This is our course here that I'm gonna demonstrate. And so if I click content, now I get this option to build said content, all right? So I wanna click this dropdown. Um, and in your Blackboard instance, you should see the, the option here of adding hypothesis, okay? So I think I'm gonna just try this one here and there we go. All right, and so now I get a screen where I can pull in a title of an article. I've actually already pulled one up here on the side. So I'm gonna drop that in real quick, um, the name of said article and grab that super quick and put it in here. And I've also, um, as you can imagine, enable a lot of hypothesis articles. So I've, I've got a few sets of directions that I keep open on a note. Uh, on my desktop. So I'm going to grab one of those, copy, and put that here in my description. Oops, sorry. That was not the way it was supposed to work. There we go. So now I've got that in there. Um, pretty simple instructions. Um, we'll talk later about how you can mix up those instructions a little bit to promote different types of engagement, but this is uh, very basic directions that I've enabled here. Um, obviously, I want to enable evaluation. That's really important if I want to see that grading um, toolbar at the top uh, of my hypothesis reading. So I want to make sure I click that. And this is important to know, you can um, create it for as many points as you would like, and that's how it will show up in the gradebook. But 
in the toolbar at the top of the reading, it will only go up to 10. And so um, that will, whatever you input into the 10, <laughs> zero out of 10 will translate um, if it's a higher amount of points. So let's say um, you wanted to give a student an 80 out of 100, you would give them an eight in that top toolbar. Um, so, and so on and so forth. So hopefully all that makes sense. Um, for our purposes, I'm going to keep it simple and make this a 10 point assignment, since I know that's the default in that top toolbar. Um, I'm not going to worry about the due dates and things of that sort, but once I'm done, I'm going to click submit. All right. And so now it's showing here, but it hasn't been connected yet with Hypothesis. So I've got to click on that. And now is where the magic happens. And so obviously I've got lots of different pathways. You might not have quite as many, but I'm gonna use this one here, which is to enter a URL. Um, but you guys primarily will probably have at least OneDrive and Google Drive as alternate options. You might, depending on your institution, also have um, the integration with Blackboard files. So I'm gonna click that. And now I've got this article still open. Now is when I grab that URL. So I'm gonna copy that, paste it, and then hit submit. Now here is where I wanted to show you what I was talking about earlier. If I wanted to make this a small group assignment, this would be where I would do that. So I would click this option. If I've already got group sets set up in my Blackboard instance uh, or in the course, I can actually pick those and assign them um, as necessary. But today I'm not doing that, so I'm just going to click to continue. And now, just like in that article I showed you before, we've got our selection. I've actually already done a little bit of annotation in here, which is cool. Um, but that is what it looks like. And of course, now I can drop down to whatever students are in the course and I can assign them their grade out of 10 up here using the toolbar. All right. Do we have any questions? I know I've done a lot of talking at you for quite a bit here. So I want to make sure I stop and get an idea of questions that might be in the room. Good. All right, well, now is where I kind of pivot to talking a little bit more about the pedagogy, the uh, instructional ways that you can use Hypothesis. And obviously you can use Hypothesis in your face-to-face -face classes, um, using annotations as a springboard sort of to seed discussion. Um, you know, I, I've had have tons of instructors that like to uh, open their face-to-face -face time with an annotation summary activity. So they've done some pre-reading um, outside of class, coming to class prepared with those annotations and ready uh, to use them and talk about them. Or they can be in those fully online courses, hybrid or high flex, where it would potentially replace your discussion board. Um, or, you know, I was that kind of a student um, in college myself, especially undergrad, where, you know, I might have been reluctant to speak a lot, um, both in an online and face-to-face -face situation. I was just a shy student in general. And so uh, annotation would have given me a voice um, and made me feel connected to the larger group, which I think is super important. Um, one of the things I wanted, I told you before, I was going to share uh, some alternate ideas of instructions that you could include with your assignments. And I think this slide is a great one to come back to um, because this has actually got a link um, to what we call annotation starter assignments. And so if you're looking for a low risk, low stakes way to sort of introduce hypothesis in your courses um, and uh, have copy and pasteable directions that are already provided, then these are uh, this these are a great resource for you. So I would definitely encourage you to come back. If you don't come back to anything else, try these ones out um, because we've had a lot of great feedback on them. In fact, 
Um, we're honored to have, be in the presence of the person that created most of these, and that's Christy. So for those of you who work with her, um, she knows more about these starter assignments than anyone. Um, so you could definitely follow up with her about those if you'd like. Um, but like starting off, of course, with annotating your syllabus, that's one of the assignments. Um, uh, how to work with STEM texts, how to use group roles to really focus the thinking and um, uh, the tasks so it's not just general um, annotations that sometimes don't get really in depth. Um, this just kind of highlights um, that you are one of many institutions across the world that uh, are partnering with Hypothesis. Um, if you would like to make a meeting with your customer success manager, who's most likely in this call, either me or Christy, uh, we have a way for you to make um, uh, make a meeting if you don't already have that link. Um, but we do offer that pedagogical support. Um, we have a link here to view our liquid mar margins. Um, call it, is it a vodcast, I think, um, but <laughs> Liquid Margins, which has tons of episodes, uh, speaking with inter and interviewing instructors across the world about how they use Hypothesis, so you'll, you could glean some great ideas there. We have this cool Hypothesis Educator Forum that you can join um, and be a live participant to ask questions and uh, get ideas from fellow educators. And then, of course, if you have any technical support issues, you can always reach out directly to our support team. We also have more partner workshops. So you're um, obviously in the one today, activating annotation in Blackboard and your LMS. But we also have several topical workshops coming up. Um, and if you click this link in the slide 26, you can see what those are. Get the direct link to register for them today. And last but not least, <clears throat> we thank you for attending um, and sincerely from our entire customer success team. Um, this is contact so that if you don't know by chance um, who to reach out to after today or maybe just forget, you can always reach out here too um, and uh, we will follow up and we'll go to the right person. Um, and with that said, do we have any other questions?